हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू कोडिंग अड्डा आई होप यू ऑल आर एंजॉइंग द वीडियोस ऑफ कोडिंग अड्डा इन केस यू आर एंजॉइंग प्लीज प्लीज लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब टू गेट द न्यू कंटेंट टुडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस अ न्यू टॉपिक अ प्रोजेक्ट ऑन सीएलआई टूल कमांड लाइन टूल so without further delay let's get started today we will develop to do ctl cli tool this tool we already have on back end my to do and we have when ui portal of this my to do back end service so this path is already present today i am going to develop to do ctl cli2 in golang this backend service already have developed apis for saving to do and for retrieving to dos we will not focus on this backend service this backend service is written in node and today we will develop to do ctl cli in go land what would be our exact requirement so let's discuss that first to do ctl so this is our interface to develop when you will type to do ctl in command line it will show this message to you to do ctl is a cli client of my to dos you can use our my to dos portal also for managing your task so this is a alternative of the ui uses to do ctl and the available commands help is already there for getting the more informations along with that we have two command create and view we will develop this two command create creating a to do and view viewing a to do viewing all the to dos that we have then the flags we'll use cobra library cobra cli for this this is a popular library in go lang which help us to develop a pretty good standard command line tool so let's jump to the vs code for developing this project so we already familiar with many command line tools like git like docker and in the project like npm okay so we can use git also if i write git here then it will so this is git command this is the uses there are other commands that we use git clone git init add mv restore so git is a popular code base management tool and this has already a develop terminal so similar command line tool for to do ctl here going to develop now we'll move to cobra cli this cobra cli will be used for developing our tool how will use let's read the documentation first hmm yeah cobra provide its own program that will create your application add any commands you want it's the easiest way to incorporate cobra into your application install the cobra generator with the command go install go will automatically install in your path so how to use it initialize a module if you already have a module skip the step so we have already created one folder to do ctl now we are already cd into that 
folder. Now we have to initialize one module. Go mod n8 with the module name. Let's do that. So we have this is the directory created and we entered already here. Go mod n8. This is the module name. So to do CTL and we'll use the same name to do CTL here. That will keep it simple. Creating new module. So module is created already here. Nothing, no dependency till now. Now what we will do? If you don't have installed Cobra CLI, then please run this command first to use Cobra CLI command. Cobra CLI is already installed. Now I will do Cobra CLI init to create the base skeleton project. Your Cobra application is ready at this path. So this command created all those things. It created one main.go then the module file already was there. This is the module checksum file. Then we have CMD folder and it added the Cobra CLI in it added one base command that is root.go. Root command. To do CTL is the same name as our package name, short description, long description. So now if I run this, go run dot, then it will run this main dot go file. And the output is a longer description and this thing. So this is the same information that we already have here in the short and long description. Okay, so now we are ready with the base command and the skeleton of the project. Now we are going to make modification and this project to develop this as per our requirement. Now we will change this description first. Use short and long. Okay, so this is to do CTL, to do CTL. Let me add this word in the setting. Add to do CTL to the workspace setting. We have short description. To do CTL is a CLI client of task control. Also, we have long description, similar description along with you can use our task control portal instead of so this is really CLI tool and when you will run this main file then it will call this execute this over this function we will remove all the comments that we have also we don't need any flags because we will add sub command to the root command let me remove all those. If I run this now, then you will get our information. Utocitial is a CLI client of task control. You can use our task control portal also for managing your tasks. That's information we are getting. We will add our command that is the create command and view command. What we have to do to add the sub command, it's already mentioned in the documentation. 
Cobra CLI add, then serve and config the sub command name. We'll do the same thing here. Cobra CLI. It's already created. Create button. Cobra CLI add. Then you have to name the sub command name. We want to add view also as per our requirement. It's created view dot. So all the sub commands file will be there. So it will create one file with the command name. Now we'll modify based on a requirement. So now if I do to do CTL, uh, if I run this, go run. It's already listing all the sub commands, create and view. A brief description, a brief description. Now we'll modify this description. Let me go to first create. Create our task. This command will create a task. Let me remove all of the information. So, when this command will run, then this description we are seeing. And we have one function run. Okay, so this function will be executed when we will run this particular command. And init will be initialized time. And this is the action that we want to do when we will execute this function. Those we have to Written. That means in case when this command will execute, when anyone write to do CTL create, okay, then what we will do? We will create one task. So we will call the backend save API and we will show in the UI one message that your task is already created in backend. That code we will write here. And in any, if we have any flags, like for creating a task, we need more inputs. What will be the task title? What will be the task descriptions? Assigning all those properties of task that we'll take as a flag, like to do CTL create dash dash title is this placeholder title description is dim that, that assigning is this so all the arguments that we want to take as a input so this title description all those inputs will be added here the init as flag and we will receive those information here and we will call the backend api and all the tasks that we want to perform when this command will be executed Okay, so let's develop this. I have already the code written. I'll share all the codes with you in my GitHub. Okay, I'll explain this. Before that, we have to create one util package. Util. Uh, then we need the model that is task dot go and we need another model that is task create response backend response Let me fill all those information. <laughs> so this is util dot. Okay. 
So first we have created one task dot go. This is the struct. So why this struct is required? This struct is required because task is a custom type which has many other fields like title, description, and in future we can add other fields here assignee, maybe due date, priority, all those things we can add here. And what is this? This is the type of value this field is going to store. So title will be string, description will be string, and what will be the JSON tag? This is small title and this is description. And the title will not be exported in JSON when it's empty. Same for description. So I will explain more with regarding this. Let me go to my postman. So we already know we have two APIs, create task and list all tasks in our backend. This is create task. So backend service is running in 5004. It will take this body, title, description, assignee, priority as an input to create the task. This is a post API. We are going to call this API when create command will be executed. So in JSON, we have small title, small description, assign and priority. So we are creating the struct against this attributes. Okay. So we have only considered title and description. Later, we can enrich and consider other attributes. So as in JSON, it is small, we mentioned this here. So against this title, the JSON field name will be this. Against this description, the JSON field name will be this because JSON, this struct will be mapped to the JSON when we'll call the API. So this will be Marcel. This struct will be Marcel to this JSON. And there will be one unmersal to get JSON to the struct. Then we'll got title, small title as response in, in, in task response, and this will be mapped to the this title. That's why we need the corresponding mapper field name here. So how you can add this? Simply after, let's say we have till this. Now we'll create here and add truck fields. Okay. Similarly, we have another response that is create response, create task response dot go. Why we have this? Because when we'll call this API, let's call this API. And we'll get a response like this. Your task is created with task ID 8. So we need one struct to receive this information in our go end, right? So where the JSON field name will be task underscore ID. So similar thing, JSON field name is task underscore ID and uh, in our go, the field name is task ID. So we have created another struct. When, when we will got the response after calling this post API, we will save the response in this struct. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now we'll go to the util. In util, we have already ready-made function. So let's keep those two API read and write. We'll focus read API and write API. What is read API? Read API is calling the get API for getting all the tasks. So we have already one get API also. This is class list. So from read function, we'll call this API and we'll get all the list of tasks here. 
all the list of tasks. One, two, three, four. We have eight tasks. We will get all the tasks. Okay, and we have already task struct for receiving those information. This is the same format as the request body that we are passing in the post API. Okay, so this we are using HTTP library, the basic library for calling the REST APIs. HTTP.gate, this is the task server URL. Then we are calling the list API, we are getting the response. Okay, then we are unmersal. We have the JSON. We have to map this JSON to our task struct. That things we are doing here. Here we are using this task. If I go to here, then it will reach to this struct. Okay, so we are mapping from response to this struct. We'll get an array of struct, array of task here and the get API response. Because we'll list all the tasks that we have. That's why we have taken here one array of task type. That's very simple. I'll share all the codes, then write API. This is for saving the task. We are calling slash save API. Then we have already the task as an input because we have to send this task in the request body of this create API. So we have to first marshal this to the JSON. Then we will send when we will call to this post api this we are marshalling and we are sending http dot new request post call we are doing here we have done get call then we are executing the post call here if any error occurs then we are printing those error and after getting the response this is our response so this is a json we have to map to this against our which struct against our this task response struct that we are doing here task create response that has only one field task id that is done here we are unmarshalling we are unmarshalling means we are creating our struct and we are returning those utility functions we will use in our create go run function and what this two API, read API and write API, instead of calling the server, this function store the task in a file, task.json. That means you will have one file here in the root, task.json. Uh, we'll have the one file here, task.json, and it will store this task.json as a backend, so it will store all the files here instead of calling the APIs. So let's say you don't have the backend service and you want to implement this, then you can use a file to store all the tasks and you can retrieve all the tasks from this file. This is the alternate function that I have written here. Now we will go to create function. We have already utils. Okay, okay, okay. I have to rename this as okay. Now we can import this. Okay, the import option is available. Quick fix. Then we'll go to here and we'll import github.com so if we call to do CTL utils. So this is our own utils. We have already imported. Now what we are doing? We are getting all the inputs, these flags that we have. We have to first add all the flags. 
let me add all the flags first so we have we have currently two flag title and description other fields we can add maybe later we can enrich this application our motto is to show you how to develop cli then you can add other functionalities and reach this application to make it production ready so we have title and description command dot flags dot string this is a string if you want to add boolean then you have boolean p all those things we have here okay if you want to add boolean then you have boolean and other data type also so title this is the name this is the short name this one and this is the long name of the flag then this is the default value if you want to add any default value for this command if user don't provide any input and this is the description of this flag we have added create and description flag then what we are doing we are retrieving all those values cmd dot flag cmd this is the cobra dot command cobra dot command type so this command dot flags dot get string we are getting title we are getting description we are creating our truck then we are passing this struct in our right API and right API will call the save API and pass this and as a request block. Then we are printing task create with ID. This is the response. This is of type task create response and we are printing the task ID. This is done. Let me run this command. We don't have assignee. It's telling that task created with ID 9. So we already have task till I. Now, instead of hitting this API from Postman, we call from our CLI tool. That's very interesting. I think you have already developed your first command in CLI. Congratulations. And you have created the task with ID 9, the next task of 8 with this information now we'll develop the view command and we'll see whether this task is present or not in output of our view command we have already the skeleton of view that we have created just now let me fill all the informations for the view command also And we don't have any flag now in view. You can add the flags like whether you want to show all the tasks from the beginning or maybe task after certain date or task uh, assigned to someone or only only the task <coughs> which has high, higher priority. All those flags you can add here for the requirement so this all will be flag let's say you want to see task assigned assigned to person one <laughs> or all the tasks created today all the tasks that is not completed yet so this kind of flags you can add here so now we don't have any flag 
we want to see all the tasks that we have created from the beginning. So we are calling the read API. Read API will give us all the tasks. This is of array of type task. Then we are looping through this array and we are printing all the tasks. That's very simple. Now we'll execute this. So before that, we have to build our CLI application. How we'll build? You know, we have to use go build command. Then this is the output directory. So we are passing output directory as our go bin directory. Because this go bin directory, this directory already added in my path. So I can directly use the command. So I am putting the binaries to my bin folder. If I use go build, then it will create one exe file and it will put that exe in this path. Now we can use to do if I go to this part okay once then you will see. Let me go to this part. CD <coughs> LS. It has to do CD. Let me go back to my okay. Now we can use to do CTL. I write to do CTL, then it will show you have available command create and view. So this completion automatically generates this command by the Cobra. We can off this command also. This completion and help is generated by the Cobra. We have created create a task and view all tasks. All the description that you have written. Create a task, view all to Okay. Now what we will do? We will want to create. We already executed this create command. Now we want to retrieve all the tasks that we have already created. To do CTL, view dash age. So we want to see what are the available comments we have with view. It has no flag because we don't have create any flag here. If I write to do CTL create dash a, you can use dash h or dash dash l. Then you will see you have description. You can use small d hyphen d or the whole word for titles and all the flag description it has it added here. Title specify task title or heading. Okay, for description specify the task description. This d d dot hand and the tool name and the type of the value for this command. Okay, now we'll execute to do CTL view command. Yeah, it's giving all the tasks that we have created. We have till this. We have created this one placeholder title and sample description 24 just now. Let me create another task for you. Then you will understand. Uh, let me change this. We have any developing our to ETL ELI tool. This is our description. And, and the title, maybe we can write completed ETL tool. So this will be created and the ID is 10. Now let me view this. CTL view. Yes, you are getting that completed to do CTL. So description is we have finished developing our to do CTL. So all these are printing from our view command. When we are executing this view command, then it's retrieving all the tasks 
all those tasks, then it's printing all the tasks one by one. I hope now you have the idea how to build a ELI tool. So it's very simple. I am summarizing. What we have to do? You have to first go install this Cobra CLI one time in your system. After installing Cobra CLI in your system, now you can use all the commands that provide this Cobra CLI. Okay. After that, you have to create your directory where you want to develop this project, like we are developing in Todo CTL. Then first you have to create your module as we are using Go module. Okay. After that, you have to use Cobra CLI in it. This will create the skeleton project. Now you are free to use any subcommand like this. So it will create the file for you here and you can modify based on your requirement. Uh, you can add flags here and the task you want to perform, the action you want to perform after executing this command, when anyone will hit this command to do CTL, to do CTL view, then the task, then the action you want to perform, you have to write here. You can call the API, you can save the file in your file system, or you can uh, perform some calculation and store that in the database, whatever the task you want, you can write simply your Go code for that. You can send email, uh, happy birthday message to the customer, all those things that you want are free to do any task here. And how we will execute your tool? You have to first go build this and you have to install your binary in your Go path so that you can directly use your to do CTL command. Why we are using to do CTL here? Because our root command name is to do CTL root dot go. And we are using this create and view as a sub command after. All the informations like the library path, code base, all those will be provided in the description of this video. Please feel free to comment if you have any question. I'll try to address all those things. I hope you have now confidence to write a CLI tool. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.